Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to generate a code book using SPSS. Even before I proceed to talk about how to generate a code book using SPSS, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let me begin by asking a fundamental question. What exactly is a code book? How is it different from metadata? If you are a young researcher, you may have a lot of variables in your data set, which are categorical, which are coded. For example, zero may be the coding for males and one may be the coding for females. You may have states of India, which are coded as one, two, three, so on and so forth. Sometimes it can be very, very confusing to understand what code represents what kind of information. This is where having a code book comes in very, very handy. Now, in simple layman's language, a code book is simply a document that explains the meaning of codes labels and abbreviations used in a data set or research study. Think of it like a dictionary for your data. If I have to give you two simple words to describe a code book, a code book is simply a data dictionary. Imagine you're working with a survey that asks about favorite colors and the responses are coded as one blue, two red and three green. The code book would explain what each code, that is one, two, three, represents, making it easy to understand the data. Typically, a code book, my apologies, typically a code book would include four important things. The first, variable names and descriptions. Second, code labels and meanings. Third, data formats like date, time, text. Fourth, any abbreviations or acronyms used. Having a code book helps ensure what, my apologies, having a code book helps ensure that others can understand the data correctly, making it easier to analyze and interpret the results. In simple terms, a code book is a guide that helps you decipher the secret language of your data. Now, Let's ask another important question. What is the difference between a code book and metadata? A code book and metadata are related, but they are not the same thing. So what is the difference? Metadata is data that provides information about other data, or it is data about your data. It is like a summary or description of your data which includes details such as title, author, date created, data source, format, and size. Metadata helps you understand the context and characteristics of your data. A code book, on the other hand, is a specific type of metadata that focuses on explaining the meaning of the codes, labels, and abbreviations used in the data. It's a more detailed guide that helps you interpret the data correctly. Think of it like this. Metadata is like a book cover and title page giving you an overview of the data. Code book is like the glossary or dictionary explaining the specific terms and codes used inside the book. While there may be some overlap, metadata is broader and a code book is a more specialized tool for understanding the data. With this background about code book, let's now proceed to generate a code book using SPSS. At first, when you see this data set, it might not be very clear what are we talking about. For example, you have a column called as video and there are two numbers, one and zero. What is the description for this? You have to click on the value labels. Let me go ahead and click on value labels. Now you can see one stands for yes and zero stands for no. Like this, there are many 
variables which have its codes and respective code description. We will now look at how to generate the code book for this entire data set. The first thing that you need to do to generate a code book is to go to the analyze menu bar. The very first option here is reports and under reports you have what is called as code book. Let me go ahead and select the code book option. There are three tabs, variables, output and statistics. Let me select variables and hit the reset button. In the left hand side, SPSS gives you all the variables that you want. You can specifically choose only those variables which have codes or in my case, I'm going to select all the variables and move this into the code book analysis variable section. Next, let's proceed to look at the output section. There are two important things. One is variable information and the second is file information. There are approximately 10 options under the variable information like position of the variable, the variable label or description of the variable. Suppose you have respondent's name. Now you may have the entire description of the variable for this particular column name. You have type, format, measurement level, role, value labels, missing, custom attributes and reserved attributes. This is pretty exhaustive. We don't need all of this information. So I typically prefer to unclick the option format. Similarly, I don't need the option custom attributes and reserved attributes. In case it is important, you can take a look at the different options that are available under file information. You can generate file name, location of the file. This is important sometimes because you may forget the location of the file. And the next time around, accessing the file information might be difficult. Number of cases or sample size, label, documents, weight status, custom attributes, and reserved attributes. For the purpose of this video, I will not be selecting any of the items under the file information. Next, let me proceed to the statistics tab. There are two sections here. One is counts and percentages, which are mostly used for categorical variables. So whenever you have a categorical variable like gender or state, region, religion, you can go ahead and select counts and percentages. You can see here, SPSS helps you by giving you a small description, which says counts and percents apply to all nominal and ordinal variables including all string variables, multiple response sets and labeled values of scale. The second section is central tendency and dispersion. You can go ahead and select mean standard deviation and quartiles. I'm not going to disturb any of these things. Have a look at the description that SPSS provides. Measures of central tendency and dispersion apply to scale variables only. Now, what this option says is, if you have scale variable, SPSS will be displaying these three options. On the other hand, if you have either nominal or Likert scale items, you can go ahead and generate counts and percentages for Likert scale items. So once you have made these selections, let me go through these options once again. You have to just select the variables, select all the options that you need under the output section and look at statistics and hit the OK button. We are in the output window. In the output window, when I scroll up, you can see SPSS generates a code book for each and every variable. Here, you can see the variable ID. SPSS gives you some important information like what is its position. It is in the first column. So the value here is one. What is the label for ID? Sometimes people may make a mistake of considering this as participant's ID. Here, it represents questionnaire ID. What is the type of this variable? Numeric. You can have a look at the measurement. It is considered as scale. It would be better that we look at it and consider it as a nominal variable. 
role is that it is input. We do not use IED as an input or output variable. So this might be wrong. In fact, this is wrong. You can look at the sample size. That is the number of valid cases, which is 328. The number of missing cases would be zero. And certain summary statistics like mean standard deviation and the three different percentile values, that is 25th percentile, 50th percentile, and 75th percentile are generated. Then we now go ahead and select another variable, let's say gender. For gender, you have the position which is in the 14th, the variable gender is in the 14th position. It is labeled as respondent sex. The third option here is the type of the variable, which is numeric. Measurement is ordinal. The role is input. Here you can look at the value labels, zero and one. Zero represents females and one represents males. Have a look at the count. There are 170 females in this data and 158 males in this data. Their respective percentages are given. So this is a lot useful and easier when you look at each and every table because it gives us an insight about the type, the position, the codes, and their respective labels in a tabular format. This is one way of generating the codebook, but this is not the only way of generating a codebook. If you want another very crude way of generating a codebook, I would like to illustrate method number two. To generate a codebook, you can go to the file option. Here, there are different items. I like to go to display data file information. You can get the data file information for either a working file or an external file. I'll choose the option working file here. Now, let me go to the output section. You can see here, this is the output of data file information. SPSS prints a lot of columns like the variable, its position, label, measurement level, role, the column width, alignment, print format. You have the right format and missing values. The last column is very, very useful because that gives you an idea of how the missing values are coded. Now, you can take a look at ID, its position, it is considered a scale. What's its role? We have not specified any role. So by default, SPS would be considering this as an input variable. Then the other information is for academic purpose. You can just ignore the rest of the columns. So this is how big the code book is. Below this, you have another table. I find this more useful than the earlier one. Here, SPSS gives you the codes and the corresponding labels. The second table is more useful than the first table. You can see here, for all the categorical variables, SPSS gives the codes with its description. So this would be easier and simpler way of generating the code book as compared to the first one. With this, I've come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we have seen How to generate a code book using two different methods. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day ahead.